well 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 good students welcome once again this is 2022 january the second year at the time of doing this memories we lost and other stories they are compiled by chris wanjala uh in this episode we're not going to waste time we're going straight away to look into um a, a, the analysis the plot summary character and characterization the themes in the story and an exam style question uh, what kind or the projected exam style questions that our examiners or that exams are going to expect us to respond on so it is still kcsa english literature paper 101 stock 03 2022 uh, straight away briefly let's talk about the author the author Lidudu Malingani was born in Eastern Cape province of South Africa in a village called Zikoven. Lidudu Malingani is a writer, filmmaker, and of course a photographer. He grew up herding cattle and molding goats from clay and later grew fond of words and images. He writes about music, art, culture, and films for the male guardian and Africa is my country. He has published in the literature journals Chimurenga, Chronic, and of course, Plufrock, and the second short sharp story collection, Adults Only. He currently lives in Cape Town. The title, Memories We Lost, is a biography. The life of a sister seen by a younger sister. The story is about mental illness, gimfriending, and its effect. It is first described as this thing that takes the narrator's younger sister. Over time, it robs the sister of the ability to speak and remember, hence, the title, Memories We Lost. The title reflects the loss and regret. The setting. The story is set in South Africa. Indeed, the author Lidudu Malingani is a South African. Several South African indigenous words are used in the story. The plot. The story, Memories We Lost, is about challenges brought by mental illness to the victim and those around them. The mental illness is schizophrenia. It is a mental disorder characterized by many symptoms. It causes a breakdown in the relationship between thoughts, feelings, and actions. There are many causes of the disease and hereditary is one of them. It is no wonder that the disease runs in the narrator's family. The narrator's father was schizophrenia. Events and actions in the story rotate around a sick sister. The sickness is terrifying and attacks without warning. The narrator tells us that after the attack is over, she would number, she would mumble a prayer and would embrace the sister for a long time. This suggests and represents that the reader that the illness is horrific and painful. In one of these attacks, the sick sister screams and disappears into the night. All men and boys go out in search of her. The men, or boys disoriented and peered, shuffled in the dark and split into some groups as instructed by a man. You can find that on page 10. Hours later, they return but without the sister. It is the mother who returns the following dot carrying the daughter. In a different episode, as the narrator is telling her sister's story, she is seized by an attack and knocks her head on the wall so much, one so hard that she, ble she bled profusely. An effort to shield her from doing these fails because of the abnormal strength that the sister has during an attack. The episode is so memorable to the mind of the narrator and says, the smell of blood lingered after many sunsets had come, even after the rain had come page 12. The disease makes the sister violent and destructive. This is evident in a case where she flung a desk across a room smashing the glass window. In yet another moment of attack, the ill sister pours hot porridge on the sister's chest causing her a lot of pain and harm. It is due to the disease that the narrator's sister drops out of school and cannot continue with her schooling. This thing, and I quote, this thing that took over her followed her to school and had to drop out, drop out rather.
This makes the narrator who loves the sister so much to absent himself from school, eventually suffering the same fate. The narrator spends much time with the sister playing, for example, drawing sketches. It is while, narrator, it is while the narrator is in school that she learns about schizophrenia. She comes to understand that it is what the sister was suffering from. She further learns that there is no medication for the disease and has no cure. The medicine she was taking was of no help. The, sisters, the sister secretly decided not to take the medicine anymore. The first thing my sister, and I quote, that is from the text, the first thing that my sister and I got rid of was her arsenal of medication on page 13. Henceforth, they buried all the herbs and the narrator demonstrated to the sister how to fake taking medicine, medication drinks. Like any good mother, the mother has made many attempts to have the girl cured. She has used herbs, modern medication, prayers, and even consulted. The younger sister tries as much as possible to bring the sister to be her old self. In one such episode, the sisters are playing the rain. They are happy and the sister appears to have left the sister. We jumped in the rain in that moment. My sister returned. She smiled and laughed. That day, we began to form new childhood memories, filling the void left by one that had been wiped out. Page 14. The mother sees them in this state and she imagines that the disease was going to come again. She organizes for another ritual to cure the daughter. This time around, she organizes for Mkunzi, witch doctor from another village famous for baking people on a fire from cow dung and wood. The narrator is aware that the effects of ritual is unknown as dangerous rituals and says, I had not had anyone who had survived. She could not allow this to happen to the sister. They both run away to the unknown place. Just like the father before them, the two sisters are escaping from their village and the people. They want to put enough distance between themselves and the home memories and secrets that stamp them as belonging to a family known for mental illness. But at the end, hope is on the side. For after walking the whole night, they reached a town and a hospital in sight. They knowingly 15 each other grip. So let's look at characterizations. Let's start with the narrator. She is a sister to the mentally ill sister. The narrator and the sister have two names, no names, sorry, because they symbolize or represent others like them who love and live with mentally ill relatives. The narrator is loving or affectionate. She loves the mentally ill sister despite her state. This is unlike many families where the mentally ill have no one to take care of them. When the sisters come out of an attack, she's always there for her. The empresses, the empresses I remember, were always tight and long as if she hoped the moment would last forever. That is a quote from the text. There is a strong bond of love between the two sisters. The sibling's relation is loving and cordial. They even discuss their physical growth and include the emergence of the sister's growth. The narrator is curious, inquisitive when she hears the mother and the uncle discussing the sister's illness in the morning. She crouches near them to hear what they are saying. She is quite protective and protects us, the sister from the wrath of Mkunzi, a Sangoma who begs patients with mental illness. They run away to another village. The narrator emphasizes with the sister. When called by an old aunt from the house, the narrator says, we hugged tightly my sister and i wiped each other's tears she's inseparable inseparable rather from her sister the only way to have me turn away from her would be to cut us apart the night is courageous because she walks throughout the night with the sister alone in the village in the villages as they are fleeing even with the dogs barking she's religious and prayerful when the sister comes out of an attack from mental attack, she says, I stretched my arms out in all directions, mumbled two short prayers. The sick sister. Most of the things we know about the, her are told by the sister. She's mentally ill and because of this, she is violent. She holds a desk breaking the window in her class. She also violently harms herself by hitting her head against a tree trunk until she bleeds. 
she pours hot porridge on her sister, but she also loves and her sister, sorry, good. Uh, but she also loves and her relationship to the sister is cordial and loving. She is also secretive and emotional because she cries the whole night of the ritual but does not want to bother the brother to know. And she sunk her teeth in the pillow so that she would not cry. The mother, she is determined. Her determination to have the daughter healed of the mental illness is admirable. She tries all forms of remedy including prayers, herbs, witch doctors, etc. We also see this determination when the daughter has a seizure illness and runs away at night. All the men and boys return with the girl, hopeless. The mother comes far much later the following day after finding the daughter. Only returned home when the sun was up in the sky the next day, carrying my sister on her back. That is a quote from the text. She is loving. And her love is illustrated by the efforts that she makes to make her daughter cured. She tries prayers, herbal medicine, modern medicine and witchcraft. She is paranoid, fearful. On seeing her two daughters play in the rain, she fears the disease might come back again. She calls the entire village for another ritual. The father. There is only a mention of the father. There is only one mention of the father. He was a schizophrenia too, just like the daughter is. But nobody mentioned it. He left one day, never to come back. Hi. Themes. What are some of the themes in the text? Effect of mental illness. The author looks at mental illness and especially the effect on the victim and those living with a mentally ill person. The mentally ill sister first loses her speech. The first thing that this took from us was speech. That is a citation or a quote from the text. Page 8. The sister is not coherent and speaks in a language that was unfamiliar. Her words trampling as if trying to relay unthinkable revelations from the gods. The disease has affected the thinking of the sister in such a way that she cannot remember. Therefore, the disease takes away all her ability to remember. Hence, memories faded one after the other until our past was a blur. Mental illness appears to have horrifying and dehumanizing effect on the victim. The attacks tear her apart so that when she regains herself, she is totally different. Every time this, this nothing took her, she returned altered, unrecognizable as if two people were trapped inside her. The whole community is affected by mental illness. When the sister runs away due to this disease attack, everybody is concerned and run. The rich not run but men. The ritual to be performed by the Sangoma is attended by all the villagers showing it that it's a concern for everybody. Mental illness. When the writer writes about mental illness, the description is so vivid. It is as if you are right there with the victim. He describes this illness that the nameless protagonist calls this thing mental illness is harrowing, mindless, and violent disease. It is then only the disease but the cure for the illness. The next day, my sister will be taken to Mkunzi to be baked. I had heard of how Mkunzi baked people. He would make a fire from cow dung and wood, and once the fire burnt red, he would tie the demon-possessed person into the section of the zinc rotting, uh, then blaze it, uh, place it on fire, rather. He claimed to be baking the demons and that the person would recover from the burns a week later. I had not heard of anyone who died, but I had not heard anyone who lived either. The reader is saddened by the fate of those African countries who suffer from mental illness, how they are caught in violent superstition. The story brings out the reality in many African countries where there are no facilities for, a mentally, for mental Ill, illness. What serves as a cure is oftentimes cruel beyond telling of it. The mother does not understand why the same disease that afflicted her husband now afflicts a daughter. She doesn't know the disease is hereditary. People had come to believe that baking people from a fire by, by the cow dung and wood would release them of demons. This leads to death of patients rather than cure them. 
I had not heard of anyone who had died, but I had not heard of anyone who had lived either. Love and Empathy Memories We Lost is a troubling piece depicting the great, uh, the great between two siblings in a beautiful, beautifully drawn landscape. Memories We Lost is more than a story about a mental illness. It is between siblings who, who show great love and great feelings towards other despite their faults. The narrator organizes for her and her sister to flee. Not only she cannot allow her sister to be baked, but helps her to run from the village to escape the embarrassments. Ignorance and superstition. The elders refer to the disease as this thing and says it is the work of the devil and demons. Narrator says, none of them knew my sister. None of them cared. The villagers are ignorant of the fact that the disease is a medical condition as should be treated as such. So briefly, good students, let's look at the use of the language. First, imagery. The writer uses powerful images with the writings that are inspiring. The mental illness is not called by the name, but this thing to show how embarrassed and shameful it is, but also to portray ignorance of the community. The team returning from the search is described as moved into defeated men and their bodies slouched as if they had carried a heavy load to show the fatigue and frustration after the surge from the sick girl. The modern building and the hospital that the narrator and the girl see after a sigh of hope that finally the sister might be cured of her disease. After the sister hits her head on a tree continuously and she bleeds, the narrator says the blood stain remained visible on the wall long after my mother scrubbed it off long after she had applied three layers of mud and new water paint the writer shows how horrible the incident was and that it will never be scrubbed in the narrator's memory two use of symbolism the disease symbolizes a nation that once suffered the schizophrenia of upper fire and just like the sister the country is trying to understand it and cure it the notion is trying to understand and heal a national disorder. After the night's sleep, the sister will wake up once the sun is up and talk again to some place. This symbolizes a better South Africa. Finally, use of satire. Both the community and the religion are satir satirized, satirized rather, sorry, using satirical. It is very, very much satirical for instead looking for a cure that the community goes for medication that is very dangerous, like calling them kunzi to bake a living person. This endangers the girl more than cure her. Religion is also satirized because after, if, after, uh, even after much prayer, it is providing no solution. So this marks, of course, the end of the first short story in the compilation of the memories we lost and the first one is the memories we lost and the hope that you find sense out of it hope that it will enlighten it and of course stay put for exams and questions and their responses this was just only a survey over the first anthology right there good day for now